What's up, everybody? Mr. Forrest back with another episode of Large Realisms. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Not Large Realisms. Big Truths. Guys, I'm excited about this week's episode. Our big truth is still who is Jesus, the eternal Son of God who came in the flesh. Let's jump right into the preaching. Ed thought a lot about temptation because temptation was everywhere. Ed was always tempted to drink a 60-ounce Slurpee from 7-Eleven. Ed knew it wasn't good for him, but they had lime and snozberry flavor. Snozberries? Who ever heard of a snozberry? Ed was always tempted to mess with his sister because she was super boy crazy, so he would write mash notes to his sister pretending to be one of the boys in her class. And she'd get all giddy and she'd lay on her bed and then she'd find out it was Ed and she'd rage after him. But sometimes temptation was more serious. Like the time Ed was in the office supply store and he was looking for a pen. He wanted a pen to take notes in his Bible uh, during the preaching time, that he could take notes in his notebook or write in his Bible. So he wanted a specific kind of pen. He liked the kind that had a highlighter on one side, on the other had an extra fine tip pen, the kind that didn't bleed through your Bible when you write in your Bible. And he looked up and down and there were so many pens in the office supply store. There were ones that wrote in green and ones that wrote in red, ones that wrote in black, some were silver, some were gold. And then he saw it. It was the perfect pen. A highlighter on one side. Extra fine tip on the other. The clip was gold with a cross on it. It even smelled just right. And then he looked at the price tag. Fifteen dollars. Ed had two dollars. Where was he going to get $15 from? He was discouraged. He was despondent. He put it back and he was just going to get like a regular old Bic pen when it was like he heard a sound. It wasn't like an actual voice. It was like somebody speaking, but it was like in his heart. You like that pen, don't you? Well, yeah. You could take it, you know. No, I couldn't do that. That'd be stealing. You deserve that pen. Well, I, I guess it is for a good cause. And, I mean, not like they'd miss it. Look how many pens there are. They'd probably never even notice it, even in inventory. And, and they'd probably want someone like me to have it. And, I mean, maybe I do deserve it. And Ed reached out his hand and he grabbed the pen. And he looked around to make sure nobody was paying attention and to make sure there were no cameras on him. And he stuck it in his pocket. And Ed turned to scurry away and leave. But then, God the Holy Spirit got a hold of his heart. Suddenly, Ed had a flashback. It was like Ed was reliving last Sunday all over Ed had walked into his Sunday school class itching his neck. He itched his neck all the way down the hallway. He itched his neck he, as he sat down in his seat. He itched his neck all the way through song time. He itched his neck all the way through prayer time. He itched his neck all the way through offering time. And now it was Mr. Klitzing's turn to preach. And he was itching his neck during the preaching. And this is what Mr. Klitzing said. In Luke chapter 4, the night was dark. The air was crisp. The stars shone brilliantly in the sky. And Jesus was all alone in the desert wilderness. Jesus was in the wilderness fasting and praying for 40 days. To fast means to go without food so that you can pray. And Jesus had gone without food for 40 days and 40 nights. And Ed thought to himself, oh my goodness, what did his tummy feel like after 40 days of not eating? How lonely must he have felt to be alone in the desert wilderness for 40 days and nights? 
He must have been cold in the desert air at night and lonely and hungry. And Ed thought, I would be scared. You see, the book of Mark says that Jesus was out there with the dangerous beasts. In Ed's mind, Ed was like, ah, what was that? It was a wolf. Ah, what was that? It was a jackal. And then the most dangerous beast in the world showed up. It was the devil. Until that day, Ed didn't think too much about who the devil was or what he did. I mean, he heard about the devil and he knew that the devil existed, but he didn't really think about it much. Devil means slanderer or accuser. Satan means adversary or enemy. You see, the devil is the enemy of God and the enemy of every believer. And the Bible says that he's like a lion prowling the earth, looking for people to devour, to destroy. And the reason the devil came into the desert wilderness that night was to tempt Jesus to sin so that he would destroy him. And the reason the devil prowls and lurks and tempts you and he tempts me to sin is because he wants us to sin so he can destroy us. Ed was still itching his neck and he swallowed hard. And Mr. Klitzing continued preaching. He said, then the devil said to Jesus, look around. If you're really the son of God, command that these stones become bread. Now, Mr. Klitzing asked the class a few questions, and I'm going to ask you the same questions, and feel free to answer out loud. Is Jesus the Son of God? If he wanted to, could he have turned those stones into bread? Is there anything wrong with eating bread? You see, Jesus is the Son of God, and he could have turned those stones into bread, and there's nothing wrong with eating bread. The problem is, it was not time to eat bread. It was time for him to be praying. Jesus was about to begin his public ministry. And after his three and a half years of public ministry, he was going to die on the cross for our sins. This was very important preparation for him. He needed this prayer time with God the Father. It's not that there's anything wrong with eating bread, but just not at that moment. And Ed thought to himself as he scratched his neck, think about how tempting that would have been for me. If I'd gone 40 days without eating bread, I'd have been so hungry. Ed imagined that the round stones glistening in the moonlight must have looked like fresh baked loaves of bread. Maybe Jesus could almost smell the scent of bread baking. Ed thought that must have been so tempting. And the teacher continued, but by this time, Ed had stopped scratching his neck and he started chewing his fingernail. Mr. Klitzing said, then... The devil took Jesus up to a high mountain. And the Bible says he showed him all the kingdoms of the earth in a moment. So it wasn't like Jesus had these like big binoculars and he was like. It was more like it was a supernatural thing. In a moment, he showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. So it was a supernatural showing. Like, look at all the kingdoms. I will give you all these kingdoms if you just bow down and worship me. Now, Mr. Klitzing asked the class a few questions. And I'm going to ask you those questions now. Feel free to answer them out loud. Is Jesus the rightful ruler over all those kingdoms? Yeah. You remember our big truth? Who is the rightful ruler over everything? God, because he made everything, so he owns everything. Jesus is already the rightful ruler over all those kingdoms. Next question. Is there anything wrong with Jesus ruling over all those kingdoms? Absolutely not. The Bible is very clear that someday Jesus will reign over this earth during his thousand year reign. Bible's very clear about that. Here's the problem. The first commandment is no other gods. The second commandment is no idols. If Jesus bowed down and worshiped anyone or anything except himself, God, the father, God, the Holy Spirit, it's idolatry. It's sin. Anything or anyone we worship above God is that's idolatry. And Ed thought to himself, it must have sounded nice, though. I mean, look at him. He's been alone for 40 days. 
I mean, look at him. When Jesus came to this earth as a human, he had no palace. He had no crown. He had no throne or no scepter. He was born into a poor carpenter's family. So to have his kingdoms now must have sounded nice. Ed was still chewing his fingernails, but by now there was almost nothing left. Mr. Klitzen continued, and he said, Then the devil took him to a, a pinnacle in the temple, uh, the royal porch that overlooked a cliff and the Kidron Valley. From royal porch to the bottom of the Kidron Valley was about 450 feet, and Ed put himself there in his imagination, and he thought of looking down about how dizzy he would be. And the devil said, all you have to do is jump off of this. Because the Bible does say that God the Father will protect you and command the angels to catch you and protect you so that you don't even stub your toe. Now, the Bible really does say that God the Father will protect him and command the angels to protect him so that he doesn't even stub his toe. But here's the rub. For Jesus to jump off from the royal porch, fall gracefully down into the Kidron Valley, be swooped up by angels and carried up miraculously would have been a flashy display of power. Everyone who saw it would have immediately fallen down and worshipped him, tried to immediately make him king. It would have been absolute 100% proof that this was God's Messiah, the Chosen One. God the Son who came in the flesh. And there would be no cross. Ed thought to himself, that must have been tempting. I mean, who wouldn't rather be loved, adored, and worshipped instead of hated, spat on, punched, slapped, whipped, tortured, and killed on a cross? The option was, you don't have to go to the cross. You can receive worship, and you can receive your kingdom now. But Jesus had a mission, and that mission was to die for our sins so we can be rescued from our sins and brought into a relationship with God. So Jesus, to these temptations, said, no, no, no. Now, most people think, well, it must have been easy for Jesus to say no, because after all, Jesus is God the Son. <laughs> but don't forget the rest of it. God the Son who came in the flesh. You see, when Jesus came, he was 100% God, but he came 100% human. Jesus was just as hungry as you would be if you fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus was just as lonely as you would be if you were in the desert by yourself for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus was just as cold as you would have been if you were in the cold desert night air. Jesus was 100% human. So when the devil tempted Jesus as a human, Jesus said, no. And Ed thought about it as he chewed his fingernails. And then he remembered something his grandpa told him. His grandpa told him that there are little worms that live under your fingernails, so don't chew your fingernails. And Ed stopped. He wasn't sure if what his grandpa was saying was true. It's not. He was just trying to get him to stop chewing his fingernails. But it worked. Ed stopped chewing his fingernails. If Mr. Klitzig would have stopped teaching there, Ed's heart would have been so full. Ed would have had plenty to think about for the entire week. His head was spinning. His mind was going in a million different directions, but Mr. Klitzing did not stop there. Mr. Klitzing said, listen up, kids, because God has given you the same tools that Jesus used to say no to the devil when he was tempted in the desert wilderness. And he said the first tool God's given every believer is the Spirit of God. Look what the Bible says in verse 1. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. You see, after Jesus' baptism, he was filled with the Spirit. So before he even got into the wilderness, he was already filled with the Spirit. Before the devil ever came and tempted him, he was already filled with the Spirit. Starting out filled with the Spirit is like starting out a basketball game with 382 points on the scoreboard for your team before the game even starts. Starting out already filled with the Spirit 
is like starting a race, like three inches from the finish line. And the guy's like, on your mark, get that. And you're like, Psh. and you win. Starting out filled with the spirit is like being in an arm wrestling match. But you get to use both hands. And your dad gets to help. And your dad gets to use both hands. You see, before Jesus left, before he died on the cross, rose again, and ascended into heaven, he told the disciples, I'm going to send a comforter to you. He will be with you. He will be in you. And that's the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. He's our companion. He's our defender. He's our advocate. He's our hand holder. This is how Mr. Klitzing put it. The Holy Spirit is the comforter and companion of every believer. So if you've repented and believed on Jesus, then right now the Holy Spirit is with you and in you. And you have access to being filled with the Spirit. And it is one of the important tools God's given you to say no to temptation. And Ed didn't realize it at first, but now he was starting to. As he stood there in that office supply store with that pen in his pocket, he realized it was God's Spirit who brought all these memories about last Sunday flooding to his mind. The whole story from Luke 4 about Jesus saying no to temptation, the Holy Spirit brought it flooding to his mind. The Holy Spirit was with Ed at that moment. And the Holy Spirit was convincing him, Ed, this isn't right. This is sin. You need to put that back. And then Ed remembered the second tool God has given every believer in times of temptation. The Word of God. Look what the Bible says in verse 4. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. Look at verse 8. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Look at verse 12. Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. In Luke chapter 4, we have three recorded temptations that the devil tempted Jesus with. Maybe there were more, but we have three recorded for us. And in all three times, Jesus fought back. But Jesus didn't fight back by putting on the boxing gloves, like somebody ring the bell because we're going 12 rounds. Jesus didn't fight back by pulling out a sword and being like, on guard. Jesus didn't fight back by going back to back and holding a pistol like this and take 10 paces, turn and fire. No, no, Jesus fought back and Jesus used the word of God. All three times the devil tempted him, Jesus fired back with a passage of scripture that was perfectly fitting to say no to the devil. All of a sudden, Ed remembered his Calvary Kids Wednesday verse, Psalm 119.11. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And Ed realized now how important the Bible is. For so long, Ed thought of the Bible like this crusty old book, read and written by crusty old guys, that really didn't make a difference in his life. But now he saw how vital it was, how important it was, how essential it was for his everyday living. Before Ed would memorize verses just to get a sticker by his name on the wall in Mr. Klitzing's uh, classroom. But now Ed realized he needed to memorize the word of God to help him say no to the devil. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit brought back another passage of scripture. Ephesians 4.28, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone. Ed understood how important it was for him to memorize scripture so that he could fill his toolbox or fill his weapon belt in order to fight against the devil in times of temptation. He sat there with his hand in his pocket, feeling that pen. Why is this so hard, Head thought. And then the Spirit of God helped him to remember the final tool that God gave Jesus and God gave us to say no to temptation. And that is this. Freedom from sin. Look at verse 13. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Now you have to understand, Jesus was sinless. He was born without sin. So Jesus was free to say no. But all of us, we are born sinners. And did you know that everyone who has never repented and believed on Jesus is a slave to sin right now? But because Jesus lived a perfect life and always said no to temptation, 
Because Jesus offered his perfect life as a sacrifice for our sins by dying on the cross and coming back to life. When someone repents and believes on Jesus, they become rescued from their sin. In other words, they become freed from their sin. They're no longer slaves to sin. They're now free. They're now, they can now say no to the devil. Listen to what the Bible says in James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. To resist him means to take your stand. Stand like a stone wall, knowing that you have the Spirit of God, knowing that you have the Word of God, knowing that Jesus has set you free from sin. You don't have to sin anymore. Jesus set you free. So take your stand. Ed stood there holding the pen, understanding his enemy, but also understanding his weapon. Ed took that pen and he put it back in the cup and he walked out of that store with the Holy Spirit of God by his side, with the word of God in his heart and joyfully knowing that he was set free from his sin. He didn't have to sin anymore. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Big Truths. Did you know that if you're saved, if you've repented and believed on Jesus, the devil doesn't like marionette puppet you, like control your strings and make you sin. The devil isn't programmed you like a robot. Jesus has set you free. And we have the word of God. It's so important to read his word, to study his word, to listen during preaching, to memorize his word. It's so important for this battle, for our lives. And every believer has the Spirit of God with us. It's so awesome. You can tap into these tools because of who Jesus is. He always said no to temptation. And because of what he did, he died on the cross for us and rose again from the dead. So if you've never repented and believed on Jesus, I pray that you would. Our memory verse this week is Hebrews 4.15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Guys, Jesus understands because Jesus went through it. And Jesus went through it victoriously. Guys, thanks for hanging with me for another episode of Big Truth. Can't wait till next time. Until then, Mr. Forrest out.